Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Um, this time, as you can see, I'm looking at my uh, 48K Spectrum here. So, uh, it's not in too bad condition. This this is one of the ones I uh, did a video on. Uh, well, it was a series of videos. Actually, I can't remember what was wrong with this particular one. Um, it might be a bit more apparent once I get inside it, but um, it's in good condition. You know, you've got some wearing on the paint and stuff here, but overall, it's in excellent condition. It's one of the dead bug models. It's got a little dead bug mod um, on one of the chips uh, there. I forget what. I think it might be with the CPU or something. I can't remember. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a recap. Um, now, I've gone the convenient route with this and just bought a kit. Um, if you look at the volume caps in there, there's quite a few. Um, well, this covers all the different revisions as far as I'm aware, so there might be a few caps left over if I'm lucky. Um, and I think there's an additional couple of caps, or one, at least one cap anyway, for the um, composite uh, mod. This hasn't got a cap at the moment, it's directly wired in, and it should have a cap in there in retrospect. Um, so I'll get one of those in there as well. Um, and as I say, it was convenience more than anything. I've probably got most of these caps. I've got loads of radial caps from back in the day as well, um, of various sizes. There might be one or two that I haven't got the exact size for. Um, so it was better, for me it was much as convenient, it was about three or four quid this shipped for a complete kit. Now, if you buy the caps separately, you know, they're going to be cheaper, a few pence each or something, um, maybe ten pence for some good quality ones or something, but you've got to buy packs of ten or fifty or a hundred or something really. Um, so it ends up costing you more, you have tons and tons and tons left over. Um, so it's just convenience more than anything, you know, it was, it was worth it, you know, you, if you had a take a pound off the postage, three quid for that volume of caps there, that's not so bad really, that's pretty good value. Um, so I'll get the lid off now, this is the one I think, uh, yeah I did show this before, I had to replace the screws because it didn't have screws underneath there, so uh, yeah we'll get the lid off and we'll look inside. Right, so I've got the screws out there, so we'll just flip it over, I'll just carefully lift this up and we'll see if we can detach uh, the ribbons. As you can see, got one on there and one on this side here, so we'll just very carefully lift those out. This has actually got brand new membrane actually, so it should be alright, but generally with the older ones you've got to be really, really, really careful when you do that part. Um, yeah, so, yeah, there you go, you can see the dead bug there, it is on the CPU. Um, yeah, this is the one that was previously had a repair by somebody else, I think it's had a, uh, you know, the ROM is socketed there, um, ULA's usually always socketed, and um, I can't remember actually this is the one with the, that had the wrong RAM in, I can't remember. Um, you can see it's been repaired at some point there anyway, it's had two new RAM chips certainly. Um, so I think the only thing I had to do with this one as well is I had to tinker with these two pots here because the colours were all over the bloody place. Um, it, was like, it was like a yellow tinge to everything, which from what I understand is 9 times out of 10 is this this component here. Um, you, get, you can get problems with that. but. You know, so coming back to why I'm doing the cap capping on this, there's nothing wrong with this. It works now. I plug it in and get a nice clean display and all the rest of it. But these caps, um, those ones are usually alright, actually, RS ones. They've probably been swapped out at some uh, point in the past, I think. Um, it's these old, the, the ones that they shipped with back in the day. They're just not very good quality, generally. And they don't stand, capacitors in general don't last forever. Um, these probably haven't stood the test of time very well. Um, and one thing with spectrums, you know, they're really cr sort of critical. It's a bit, it's a similar sort of story with the Commodore 64, that, um, you know, you, if your caps do deteriorate um, in there, you can have, it can cause problems, it can kill some of the, you know, the RAM, um, various other things when those caps fail, um, as be various, various parts of the circuit there don't perform as they should do, particularly like around the 12 volt, you know, the, the supply of the 12 volt line and stuff. Um, it's mega critical, um, certainly with regards to the lower, the lower RAM. So um, it is a good idea. I'm going to, you know, I'm just doing this for peace of mind more than anything to try and, you know, invest a bit of, of money in this, to keep this thing running, um, because the last thing you want is, you know, your RAM failing or a faulty ULA or something. Um, I'll probably do the same thing um, at some point in future with my Commodore 64s as well. Um, for the same reasons. Um, anyway, there's just one screw holding the board in there, so we'll get that out and uh, I'll start work on it. So we'll start with these 22 microfarad caps. Um, there are a fair few, I think there's like there's one over there, there's one there, I suspect one or two of these, yeah, that's 22. Um, that looks like a 22. That's 22, so, and there's probably one or two others. Um, yeah, well, so we'll start with this one on this side here. Um, so all I need to do is just desolder, you know, desolder the two points. Um, carefully there. You don't want to use too much heat on these boards because the pads can come off really easily if, you, if you're not careful. Um, 
so just gently heat that, yeah, use a dissolver pump. Um, get a new cap in. So all I've done here is add a bit of fresh solder um, to each of these points um, for the capacitor I'm going to remove, so I'll just gently heat it and then use the dissolder pump. Um, most of the solder's off there actually, I can see that quite clearly. You can see that. That's, that's pretty good that side. This side point here is like um, going to a ground plane, you can see this massive part of the solder mask here. Um, so that's going to need a bit more heat. Yeah, it's going to be quite difficult to do that with this iron. I think I might need to get my solder station onto this, I'm not sure. If you've got a low wattage, you know, a low wattage iron like this, the key really is to keeping it there for a prolonged period of time um, and the heat will start to spread. Sometimes when you've got a fair bit of um, the ground plane there like that, sometimes just heating it and just gently, once it reaches temperature and the, the pin's free, just gently pull from the other side. Sometimes that's the best technique. And we can clear, clear that up in a minute with some dissolver braid. Um, yeah, it is double sided. It's a double sided board. I, I don't know why I forgot. I forgot that it was, but yeah, we'll just uh, clear that hole out now and get the new cap into there. So, just something I wanted to quickly point out here. Um, Someone asked me recently about uh, flux, why use flux, you know, do you really need to use flux because I've been struggling to get um, chips off a board, um, on a board like this for Spectrum or C64 or something, um, and you know, you just wondered whether flux would help, um, and I would say absolutely yes, I mean, if you look at this, I've just got a bit of desolder braid here, I want to unblock that hole there, now if I just use a bit of desolder braid like this normally, it heats up and the sucks the solder off. Now that you're lucky with that, that actually it all came out. But when you get, um, I'll see if I can find a better example. Um, so you might want to keep watching forward a few minutes, but um, I was hoping that wasn't going to happen. So here's a quick update part way through. Um, I need to clean off um, some of the flux. Um, you can see the bit of flux there actually. Um, it might be worth just pointing out that when you get um, something like this where you're trying to desolder from the other side um, and it's not coming out, you need to sometimes do what I did, which is just to gently pull it from the other side while you heat, but only when it's only when you've reached temperature. Um, it's so important you do that, otherwise you'll uh, you know remove a track, a trace, or a pad. Um, but the other thing that can help with this is getting a bit of flux on there like I did and then just use a bit of desolder braid um, and you can actually suck the solder off that way and that works really, really, really well. If you get a good quality flux like some Antec flux or some of this chip quick flux and this is pretty expensive, this is about, I don't know, eight pounds for a little tube like that. For about 30 quid you can get about five or six of these in a pack which is quite good value, that's the best way of doing it. Um, but um, all the other alternative, if you buy really good quality desolder braid that contains like a really good quality flux belt in, something like Kenwick or something like that, um, and that's useful for unblocking the holes either before you remove the component or after, um, and that can help you um, get some of the chips and components and things off these boards when you know your desolder pump doesn't seem to be doing anything at all. Um, yeah, at least that's what I would do anyway. Uh, no, you can see that got a leg or something, uh, it might be from one of the caps I've just trimmed off, just stuck on there because of the magnet. So, <laughs> yeah, you've got to watch out for that. So I'm getting there now, most of the 22 microfarad uh, caps have uh, been done, so I just need to do these ones around this area here. Um, I think that's it, that's all that's remaining. So in order to do that I need to get this surface off here. It's worth pointing out something else actually, another thing that prompted me to do this. Um, check out down below in the links uh, in the description of this video, Stig's World, I think that's his channel name, I don't think that's his, no I don't think it is, I think that's what he calls his, his channel name in general, but that's not his, uh, his YouTube or Google Plus ID, Stig's something I think, I can't remember. But so anyway, check out down below, um, I was watching some of his videos, um, and he recently done a couple of recaps, one, and one of them was hoping it was going to fix a particular fault he had. And there's a chance that could have happened, because it's also worth, uh, if I just sidetrack myself a little bit, one of the caps around, uh, I think it's one of the ones, where, it's a different revision board actually, but one of the ones related to the 12 volt supply, um, 
on a Spectrum 48 I had recently, that was just failing. Um, but it was intermittent. It was one of these you could just touch touch it with your finger like that, and the system would work, and you could you know just wiggle it a little bit, a bit would work. And then when it was cold, it wouldn't. As soon as it, it started up again, you'd get crashes and green, like garbage all over the screen. Just literally touching the capacitor there, it would start to work again. Um, it was uh, yeah, it was a capacitor issue. So I did do a recap on another one of these 48K spectrums recently. I just didn't video it, um, but I thought it might be useful just to talk about some of these things. And if anything, just mention Stig's channel. Go check out his channel there. Obviously, make sure you get these around the right way as well with regards to polarity. You know, you can see the direction of this arrow here. It's pointing to the right-hand side which indicates that this side is the negative and that side is the positive. Um, and on most of the positions on the board, um, I'm just looking for an example now, you should see, can you look at the see down there, um, you've got a plus, sorry, just there where that wire is pointing to, that's a plus. So, you know, the positive ends are there and you can see the direction travelling to that side shows the negatives on that side. Um, but one or two of these, they're not marked on the board, that one's alright, I think. Um, up there, that one. You can't see any markings on that, so be very careful before you take them off. Just have a look, see if you can work out which way around um, it is with regards to the orientation on the board. Um, you may or may not have this one, um, depending on what revision you've got. It's going to be a bit of a pain, this, because you can, as you can see, you've got, you go, there's got a diode coming into it, and then another diode joined to it as well. It doesn't go into the board, as far as I can see. It's just floating. Um, sorry, I'm not off camera as usual. Um, it's just floating at that point there, it's connected um, through a hole um, down here, but there it's just floated by the looks of things, so um, I'll be very careful about how I do this one, I think that's another 22 microfarad, it's the last one actually, the 22's to do. There we go, all done now, 100 microfarads on there, one microfarad, I think that's a 22, I can't remember, uh, or is that a 20, that's a 22, so you can see there where I had to, um, yeah, lift. You know that those that it was lifted off the board, so it's not connected. As you can see, the um, the way that works, it just hung, hangs off there. Um, but that's okay. That's the way it's supposed to be. Um, so yeah, good clean points on all of these caps. They all look fine. Just got some flux to clean off now. So um, yeah, let's go underneath this with some ice pop um, and then a brush. Just make sure uh, inspect it as well. Just make sure the solder points are okay there. And I've not got any rogue bits of solder or anything. There you go. As you can see, it's working. So, one final thing I'll do here now, uh, I always like to do this sort of thing really when I've done something like this, and that's test the capacitors, um, my capacitance meter, so we'll just switch it on, put it in sort of the right range really, um, let's test one of these, what's that, one, so probably two range. the 20 range. See that's a one microfarad cap. Um, yeah tolerance is not affecting it much there on the, the zero adjustment so that's measuring two and should be one. Uh, let's check this next one, what's this? 22. Um, I can, you can, some of these have got these little quick push contacts here so we'll see if we can use those. It uh, might be a bit quicker. So this should be 22. Look at that. 34. Look, if I adjust the, the, um, the zero thing there, it's not making a difference. So it's not like it's wildly out of tolerance. It's not. Um, that should have been a 22. This one's a 1. Let's see what that measures. 1.1. That one's alright. So we've got 1 out of 3 so far that are okay. Uh, this one's a 22. Again, 36. Should be a 22. That's ridiculous. It's like. Uh, 100% out of spec almost. That's a 1, that's a 1.1, that's not so bad. Uh, what's this one? This one's another 22. Um, I have to bend the legs on this one actually. It's not making a very good connection that one. Yeah, again, it's a 22, so that's almost 30. That's at least 50% out. Uh, what's this? Another 22. It's just that one. 44, that is 100% out. Uh, another 22, let's try start. Yeah, 30 odd, 33, 34 again. Uh, 100 microfarad. These problems will uh, be alright, I reckon. These are RS ones. They're usually quite good, these RS uh, caps. Yeah, you see, look, that one's not so bad. 107. I'm even wondering if I swap these out, because these are the sort of caps I have in my drawer. Um, yeah, 108, that's alright, just about. Um, and a 22 again. Let's check this one. 
yeah, so the caps were well, well out of spec there. Um, so it's well worth doing this. There's the final result after recalibrating those uh, two pots there. Um, it, it needed to be done because now the caps have been changed. It was out of tolerance again. Um, you know, you could tell the contrast was not right. And like little, it was like you know the picture was shimmering and stuff. I managed to get that, so it's totally, 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 totally stable now. Um, that's also got the 100 microfarad um, cap um, in series with the composite video out now as well. So uh, that's yeah, made it really tidy and uh, clean. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.